Now that we've gotten Arc Pro started up, let's take a look at some of the features that make it actually distinct from ArcMap. For this exploration, I've opened up an old file of mine where I'm looking at the RTN or RTK network stations that MoDOT operates. The first thing I want to take a look at is the pane system. Panes replace many of the things that were previously windows in ArcMap, hence pane as in window pane. These panes include the contents on the left and catalog on the right, and they're movable and dockable to any side of the screen, be it right, bottom, top, or back on either side. They can also be resized just by pulling the side as you would probably expect. Let's start by taking a look at the catalog pane over here on the right. The catalog pane is similar to the old ArcMap catalog tree or to the former standalone program Arc Catalog, which, as I mentioned earlier, is no longer going to exist in the next generation. It contains all of the folders and databases that you've connected to in your project. An important note here is that unlike an ArcMap, folder connections are project specific. So if I want to reconnect to any of these folders in a future project, I'll need to reestablish the folder connection because it won't carry over. In addition to the databases and folder connections that I have, the catalog also stores the maps and layouts for my project. You may notice there's a lot of maps here and a lot of layouts. This is because Arc Pro runs a little differently from Arc Map, which tended to focus on one map and one layout view. In Arc Pro, you can have as many maps and as many layouts open as you want. Some other things that are present in the catalog include toolboxes and locators and styles and other things which aren't present in my current catalog like web server connections, but which would appear if I made any. Let's move to the center of the screen where you can see I have a layout open. As I mentioned earlier, Arc Pro allows you to have as many maps and as many layouts in your project as you want. Currently, I have one layout and two maps open. But I have more maps and layouts than just that in my project. Let me open another layout for you. Here's another layout. You can see it opened as a new tab to the right of these other tabs in the central view. Just as you can add maps and layouts from your catalog tree, you can also remove maps and layouts and they don't disappear. They just stay over here in your catalog tree until you need them again. If I open the layout that I just removed, it's right back and we didn't lose anything. You may have also noticed that the map that this layout is based on doesn't appear in my view right now. That's because I don't have that map open, but it's still in my project. And because it's still in my project, the layout that is based on it can still function perfectly well. In addition to your maps and layouts, you can also put things like your table directly into the tab view here. This will allow you to view more of your attribute table. And you can easily just tab back and forth between your map and your attribute table as you're working with your data. There are other things that can be opened as tabs in the central view like IPython notebooks which you probably won't find need to work with too much. If you're interested in looking at two maps at the same time, you can also split the central view, like so. In this way, you can see two maps at once. In fact, if you so desire, you can see as many maps side by side as you want. 
but with more than two I find that the view gets a little bit crowded. Let's go ahead and reset it so that we just have the tabs next to each other and we aren't looking at more than one at once. Now let's move to the right hand side of the screen where we can see the contents pane. I'm noticing that my contents pane is a little bit larger than my catalog pane. I want to reduce the size of it. Again, you can just scroll over to the side, left click and hold, and shrink this just as you can with most other windows in the Windows operating system. This contents pane is equivalent to your ArcMap table of contents. It contains all of the data that's currently in the map that you're looking at. If you've got a lot of data in your map, you can use this search bar to find one specific thing and then just hit the X to turn the search off to see all of your data again. Just like with the ArcMap table of contents, in the default drawing order view you can check and uncheck the boxes to turn a particular data layer off and on. In a map view, the table of contents shows all of the data that's in your map, as well as ancillary supporting tables, rasters, etc., and your base map. If you have a layout in your central view, the table of contents will instead show the elements of the layout, but it also shows the data in your map here under Map Frame. There are several different sorting options in the table of contents. The default is the drawing order sort option, which puts features that show up on top of your map on top of the table of contents. You can also sort by data source, which shows your data in terms of where it's coming from, or by selection or editing. If you're in the selection or editing options, you can turn on or off the checkbox in order to make things selectable or not selectable. Here you can see I've set it up so that the RTN sites are selectable, but counties are not. Now if I drag a big selection box around a large area, the sites have been selected, but nothing else. The editing sort option functions similarly. Here I can turn on or off the ability to edit particular data layers. For safety's sake, I'll go ahead and turn all of my editing options off now so I don't make any accidental changes to my data. There are also a snapping and a labeling sort option, which do what you would probably expect. This allows you to snap to or not snap to a particular data layer, and this turns on or off the labels for a particular data layer. In addition to the default contents and catalog panes that open when you start up Arc Pro, many other things from ArcMap have been turned into panes. By default, these show up as tabs under the right-hand side of your screen, under the catalog. Here I've got open the element pane, which allows editing elements in the layout view. The export map pane, which allows you to export a particular map to a PDF or PNG. The symbology pane, which allows you to edit the symbology of a particular data layer. The geoprocessing pane, which allows you to run analysis and processing tools. The labeling pane, which allows you to adjust labels. Modify Features pane, which allows you to edit an existing data set. And the Attributes pane, which allows you to see the aspatial data of a particular data point that you've selected. Those are just a few of the panes available to you in ArcPro. Many of the things that you're used to seeing as Windows and ArcMap will appear as panes, and so you'll expect to see them appear over here on the right side of your screen when you open them. Remember, if you want them to be somewhere else, you can easily move them anywhere you want or dock them to any side of the screen. In the next video, we'll take a look at the other major UI change in ArcPro, 
which is the ribbon system which replaces many of the toolbars of ArcMap.